to me, dearly beloved, the day's going to come when you will have lost the ability to submit at the most crucial time of your life. And the only way you can prevent not being bundled, tied, and cast into fire is to be the saint that gets up every day of their life and says, I cannot become indifferent to my salvation. I've got to praise the Lord every day. I've got to seek the Lord every day. I've got to be thankful every day. I've got to manifest the grace of God every day. I'm not trying to hold you much longer, but I need you to get this. Malaysia, you cannot ever afford to become indifferent than the missionary that visited and brought the Godhead and the revelation and the mighty God to this nation. You cannot get here because God starts being good to this nation and become indifferent. You are supposed to be a worshiper, not a spectator. You are supposed to have exuberant praise, not just a little praise. Don't sit there and look at me any longer. There's got to be a moment in this day where we go out with high praise and a loud voice and a fresh revelation of appreciation for the gospel that we have received. He slept. Everybody said he'd become indifferent. I pastored people that became indifferent. I really have the parable of the of the parable of backsliding in the book of Luke. It's not three backsliders. It's three ways you backslide. I know you we think that, well, this is a backslider and this is a backslider, but really it's not. It's, it's three ways, only three ways to backslide. Here it is. You can become the prodigal that walks in and says, Brother Zan, I'm done. Give me what's mine. I ain't coming back to church no more. I don't want this. And you walk out that church door and you have all intentions of never coming back. And you go right back to the world and you go right back doing what you're doing. But there'll come a day. Here's the, here's, here's the truth. There'll come a day when those people will come to their senses. They'll waste all, spend all. You, you won't even recognize them. But they will wake up. The lowest of low in the stinkiest of situations, the pig pen and say, my father's servants have better than me. I'm going to rise and go back to my dad's house. Watch it. When, when prodigals leave Hope Center, when prodigals leave my ministry, I never go get them. Waste of time. I don't call them. I don't text them. I don't email them. I don't send a saint after them. I don't even tell them I miss you. Waste of time. Because you can't change a prodigal until a prodigal changes himself. He will come to himself. My job is to make sure my house stays the same. My job is to have a fatted calf ready. My job is to always believe by action. You're not hearing me. Not just get up and say, oh, my kid's coming home. Oh, that blessed saint's coming home. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to get up every day and feed that calf and say, he could come today. Give him a little extra grain. You don't think he went through more than one calf? My God, you butcher steers or beef when they're 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. It don't take but a year to 18 months to get one good and fat. I think he was gone more than a year. I think dad walked out there and said, that steer is too old. He's going to be too tough. Start over. But it was dad's job to make sure there was a fatted calf ready for when the prodigal came home. But he never looked for him. The sheep just puts his head down. It just nibbles. Man, it's hungry. It's just, I don't mean to be condescending, but it's just stupid. It's a sheep. It just eats. Next thing you know, it's in somebody else's pasture. Boy, the grass is greener over here. And all of a sudden, something grabs it, throws it on its shoulder. Sheep's bum-fuzzled, looking around, saying, my God, where, what's, what's going on here? What's all this movement? Where, where am I? What? 
And he's thrown back down in this pasture and he looks up and the shepherd goes. And the sheep says, boy, I got a crazy shepherd. And he goes right back to eating. Never knew. But the shepherd did. And sometimes your pre am I okay? Yes. Sometimes your preacher out of nowhere, can I pick on you? It's just gonna grab you. And you're gonna say, What? Man, he's crazy. And then your preacher's going to get in front of you and go. And you're just going to want to eat grass and he's going to want to act crazy. But the shepherd knew that sheep wandered off. Had I left that sheep where it was, a wolf could have got it. Somebody else could have claimed it. But I had enough common sense to go get my sheep and bring it back with rejoicing. But the coin, it didn't ask for its inheritance, and it never left the house. The coin represents the saint that's still in the house, never leaves the protection of the house, but is not in its place because it lost the ability to recognize, I no longer can feel, and thus the lost coin I won't ever say I won't ever preach or listen to me if you can ever come to church if you can ever walk in the presence of God and have no feeling you ought to you ought to go on a three day fast and you ought to pray at least 10 hours not really but you need to pray and fast because you are learning how to have an experience in the house without knowing and feeling what it's like to be part of the headband, of the glory of the house. It was a lost coin that was one among many. And when the coin was lost, it was over here under this, and it didn't even know it. But these fellas over here are the wearer of the glory said, something's not right. Something doesn't feel right. One, two, three, four. Uh-uh. I, got, I, got, I got to find that lost coin. Where, where, and the Bible says that she took a broom and began to swing. You know what that is? It's preaching like you've been here and here for the last 72 hours. Sometimes it doesn't make you feel real good. But it's the preacher's ability to lift up things and find things or show you things. Things and make you feel again. I told the church I pastored the other day, I said, if you can sit in any one of these services lately and not have tears run down your cheek or not want to run to this altar or not want to make your chair an altar, you're lost. I don't care how many ministers we have. I don't care how many ushers and staff and secretaries and Sunday school teachers and executive this and executive that. If your ministry robs you of your relationship with God, you're lost. I'm just too busy. You know what I do? Rotate them. I don't let people stay in office very long. I don't let the usher usher for a year or 18 months or two years or 20 years. I don't let the secretary stay in the office too long because you can serve there for a while. But I got to make sure I put you back among the other coins so that you can keep feeling. Thank you for letting me come. Thank you for... Your kindness, thank you for your love. I'll close. When this person sleeps and becomes indifferent to their salvation, the Bible says an enemy comes. Now this enemy is um, a unique enemy. 
Because now the Greek renders it one or something that opposes God in the mind. Watch the step. It's just prayer meeting. Can I preach to the people in the back? Please don't always sit in the back. Knock some of these people out of these front rows. Come, come, come steal their seat. There's something different happens up here than happens back there. Yeah. Yeah, because when you become indifferent, you start removing yourself, detaching yourself from anything that has the ability to see into your life or impact your life. And the, all you people in the back, boy, you, you're going to hate me after this. I love you. People who tend to have the tendency to want to hang out in the back or hang out at the farthest point are people who are exemplifying an indifference. And in their mind, whether they have acknowledged it or not yet, they have started to oppose God. Watch this. Come on, clap your hands. Thank you, but hang on. <coughs> and you've got the one or two. Clap your hands, not this good enough. You're obedient to a point. You're starting to oppose God. And the first thing that becomes synonymous with opposing God is the men that clothe themselves in ministry. First person that will become the beneficiary of your arrogance or sin or detachment will be your preacher, your church. You may never leave, but you're not going to sing anymore because they just don't know how to do it right. If the drummer would ever get on beat, that stupid guitar player, that ignorant keyboardist, if they would just, you know what, I just can't do this anymore. I'm just better off being a saint. You will always find a reason that's not you to detach yourself from what you're supposed to love. So let's sleep. Let's go ahead. Let's become indifferent because the moment you become indifferent to your salvation, the enemy shows up who is opposing God in the mind. Stay with me. This word ethros, the Greek is 2190. It means one who opposes God in the mind or a bitter enemy of divine government. So when you sleep, you become indifferent. The enemy who shows up 